All right, today on the bench, I have a ZF4 HP22, and this is out of a very early BMW. I don't know the exact year the transmission was dropped off to me uh, to be sealed because they are, I believe, rebuilding the engine. But this is a 100% mechanical transmission. There are no electrical connectors on this at all, so it's got to be probably late 80s. I'm thinking maybe very early 90s. And basically they just dropped it off for me to seal the front of the transmission where they were working on it. Uh, they telling me that they saw oil possibly coming down in between the transmission case and the bell housing. So they say, if you don't mind, if you can get parts for it, if you could please seal it up for us. It's for a wholesale account that um, is a BMW specialty shop. So. I got the parts, there was really no problem getting the parts. Everything was pretty much local except for the pump o-ring, which was a couple of days out. So the stuff still is available, still very easy to get. So we're gonna open this up, just basically just gonna take the front <coughs> of the transmission apart. You know, pretty much just up to the forward drum. Uh, forward drum will come right out once the bell housing and stator are off. And we're gonna actually kind of talk about the forward drum when we have it apart because these ZF4 HP22s have a problem with the forward clutches prematurely going bad. All right, and one of the main reasons why that happens is because on the input shaft that you will see there are two metal rings. And the metal rings <clears throat> don't really seal very well, especially the rear, uh, metal ring and they allow the forward clutch to bleed on like if you're even uh running it in neutral or, or or the car is running in park and uh, racing in park or or in neutral the forward clutch will slightly come on and will make the clutch drag on and just prematurely burn out i mean we saw this all the time back in the day, back in the, uh, you know, when we were at our other location. We're here uh, at this location for 25 years, and I don't think I've ever worked on one of these. So the last time I did was probably about 25 years ago. And back in the day when they had that inspection, because we've seen this a few times, back in the day when they would have the, uh, uh, do the inspection, like on the, um, I guess on the, uh, whatever they would call it, the dynamometer, when the car, you, you would pull the car in and the wheels would roll up in the air to do the inspection. They'd stick the thing in the tailpipe uh, or the, whatever they would have to do to do the inspection. <clears throat> On more than one occasion, when they would back the car out of the shop because the inspection was done, the car wouldn't move forward anymore because they're in there running it on, on, that, on that machine or they're uh, 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 racing it in neutral or they got a higher normal RPM in neutral, it would apply the forward clutch, just drag it on enough to burn it out. And again, more than one occasion, we've seen that. It was fairly common. So their ZF did come out with a fix for that. And what the fix is, is they would sell a kit. <clears throat> All right, first you would take the rear metal sealing ring off because you needed a ring that would seal better so they gave you a Teflon sealing ring. Okay, you would drill a hole. I've actually printed some stuff out that'll show you. You'd have to drill a 45 thousandths bleed hole in the piston. So when this would happen, or if it did happen again, the oil would just bleed right off through that bleed hole. Now, because you're drilling a bleed hole in the piston, you had to go into the valve body because there is an orifice, a forward clutch orifice with a small hole in the valve body. So as part of the kit, they would give you another orifice like with um, probably a 93 or 95 thousandths hole drilled in the orifice that you would replace. The hole was probably three times the size. And that would make up for the 45 thousandths hole drilled in the forward clutch piston. All right, so before we even get into taking this apart, I printed some stuff out just to kind of show you, because I'm not really going to be taking the valve body apart and not really going to be, uh, well, maybe we'll take the forward clutch apart just to take a look at the frictions, because if they are questionable or they are no good, 
well, it's a par, of course, now would be the time to change them. <clears throat> and if I have the uh, Teflon seal, because I, I, I still have, uh, I have to look for the kit. I know I still may have it, and maybe I can find it and show you guys, but I would need a little time to look for that, but that's not a problem. So we're basically gonna just take the front of this apart. I'm gonna see if I can maybe stand this up on the bench, uh, maybe put the camera on the tripod, uh, up on the bench on the tripod facing down like we did with that early Mercedes. Um, but actually first, you know, probably putting it back together that way, but first I'll just take everything apart and um, we'll pull it out because it shouldn't get any more to come out. No more should come out than really just a forward draw. Let me just turn my lights back on here. Everything's shutting off on me. <clears throat> and then we're going to drop the pan. I have another filter. I have another pan gasket. And uh, I guess that's really about it. So again, this is a cable operated transmission uh, no electrical connector at all and prior to this I just finished the ZF6 HP26 so <clears throat> here pretty much <clears throat> there's my uh, pump gasket my pump o-ring and front seal and this is what the filter looks like all right we take this cover should come off here like that. Then you gotta remember just to transfer the O-ring over. That's on that filter. All right, so I'm gonna put that in for them. And the pan gasket looks like this. Okay, so let me get a little closer and let me just show you. Um, I printed these out here, but I'm gonna get a little closer so you guys can see and this is the uh, bulletin on the forward clutch failure and it shows you with the drill the hole and you know we're not really going to see that so I just kind of wanted to um, just so you can visually see it all right so let me just get a little closer here and we can just go through this real quick and then we'll take the transmission apart okay all right so here is uh, what I printed out through <clears throat> my tech source ATSG all right, so this is the input shaft here, and you're gonna have the two metal rings. All right, and they want you to replace the rear one, which they say is the one that leaks and bleeds on the forward clutch with the Teflon, um, with the Teflon seal. They wanted to uh, seal a little better. They feel that the metal ring uh, is inadequate to seal, so they wanted a different style of ring put on that. All right, here is the forward clutch piston. And I want you to drill the 45 thousandths bleed hole there. And then when you get into the valve body, this is like the channel plate. The forward clutch orifice is located there. And in the correction kit, they give you an orifice with a larger hole. Or you can just drill the one out. It's about 93 thousandths. So that is what the uh, kit consists of. I actually just took about <clears throat> 15 minutes and I couldn't find it. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look some more. Um, okay, so let me get set up and we're going to start taking this trans apart. Just give me one second. All right, so we got the 17 bolts. We're going to have some short ones and some long ones. All right, so those are the different lengths you're going to have.
minus one. <clears throat> All right, so I'll pull the belt housing off. And I came off fairly easy. All right, so I'll wash this up. Here's your belt housing. Here is the pump and the stator. Here is the gasket we're going to change. <coughs> now we have a washer here. Okay. So here is the forward clutch. It looks okay in there. They like a lot of play in these in these videos also. <coughs> All right, so this has the two metal rings on it like I knew it would. You got an O-ring here. All right, so again, they want you to replace this ring with the Teflon seal when they give you the update kit. And you also want to check in here to make sure that this is not worn out. Because um, that can also cause a cross leak. All right, and here, yeah, these look pretty good. I'll open this up and uh, take a look at it. All right, here's the forward clutch hub. <clears throat> and now this here is held in. Actually, this will come out. Yeah, this will come out. Okay. It's been a while, folks. I'm sorry. Just bear with me. All right, here's the forward clutch hub. And you got some bearings here. So let's take a look at these forward clutches. I know this um, to put this back together is not <clears throat> is not that easy. You gotta probably have to press down. <clears throat> okay, you can still see the writing on these things. Wow, these things are good. And notice you have a wave steel in the front, and you have a wave steel in the back. Here's your forward piston. So this will sit in here like that. And then what you actually do when you load this up is you put, you load it up into here. Yeah, these are very good. Oops. Let me just uh, <clears throat> point this down a little bit. wave steel in the front and back and when you load these up you just load them in here Okay, now what I actually used to do is I have a little tripod here, which I still have, and I gotta press this down because of the Bell Bell snap ring and put this in. But this looks good. Okay, again, uh, input shaft. And now, here I come. So we're gonna probably. Got to get this gasket off. All right, so that's a 10. So let's take that apart.
All right, this looks good. I'm gonna wash this up in the tank. You don't get this gasket uh, loose. All right, here's the O-ring, which is good. This little, little dowel here comes out. Put that aside. And then pump gears with the dots the face up. Put the tank. So, let me uh, get everything cleaned up here. I'm going to put this uh, forward drum back together. Uh, let me get everything cleaned up. And then I'll be back with you shortly. All right, so everything is all cleaned up. And here is the converter. So I just want to try the front seal. Make sure we got a good fit there, which is good. And of course there's the spring in there to keep tension uh, so the, the seal seals. And I put some um, uh, trans gel in there just so when I'm knocking the front seal in the spring doesn't pop out. <clears throat> okay, so let's bring these things here. seal it is in place Dots on the pump gear were facing up. Okay, also you could tell on this one because you can see the witness marks where the it rides on the converter neck. Okay. Alright, so let's see if we can uh, it's not gonna work. Okay, alright, no biggie. So now we have our dowel pin, okay, and now this O-ring pretty much just sits on here. So I just want to grease this thing in place. So I want to just put a little grease here. It's not like this goes into a groove, so. So what I did, uh, once I took everything out of the tank, there was a little bit of corrosion around the outside of here, so I cleaned that off with the wire wheel. There was a little bit in here, so I took some fine sandpaper and got rid of all of that. Okay, so we got the dowel. That's going to go right there. Okay. 
back out a little bit here. And then I'll stand this up. I could prop this uh, transmission up with um, a couple blocks of wood into the hole in the bench here, and it should be pretty steady. All right, so let's get two of these tight. Now we're going to torque these down to 100 inch pounds. Once again, with the green, there's a little bit thicker trans gel. You can even use um, uh, high tack if you like. So here's the uh, uh, forward drum <clears throat> again, and if you can see the amount of clearance that this drum has, these this particular transmission, as most ZF transmission, I should, shouldn't say this particular one, ZF transmissions, they like a lot of clearance in the clutch packs. Okay, so this is good. It's all back together. Again, I was uh, looking around for that and I, I still couldn't find it. All right, and this here, the hub is in there already, the forward hub, and this is going to go on here like this. Okay. And then we have open face bearing. That's going to go here shaft just fell, which it normally does, and here is the race. That's going to go there. Okay. So now we can put this together.
Alright, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to prop this thing up. I'll probably put the camera up on the bench facing down so we can put this trans together. So let me just get set up for that. And I will be back. Okay. Alright, so we're going to load back in the forward drum. Okay. All right, that's hitting solid, so that's good. All right, next, the pump and stator. I did put a little uh, uh, high tack on the gasket. And then just, of course, be careful going over the metal rings. Okay, and then the bell housing may have to possibly move the camera back a little bit if it's going to hit the tripe. Now I think we're okay. Okay. This just bolts it right to the stator. The uh, 5 HP24 is a similar setup as far as these bolts go. Take a look at that bolt there. Let me get another one. Okay. Oops, sorry about that. do the rest.
So a couple of these little ones here. Uh, <clears throat> let me just get the thread size. I just want to run a chaser through it. All right, so just give me a couple of minutes. I'll be right back. All right, so let's tighten these down, and then we'll torque them down. So I have this set, let's see, I have this set to like 30 foot pounds. Okay, all right, so let me just pause it here, and what we're gonna do now is take the pan down, uh, change the gasket, I'm gonna wash the pan up with the bolts, and we'll change the gasket and filter. All right, so give me a few minutes, and I'll be right back. All right, take the pan off. Nice and clean. Very clean. Okay. I'm going to take that filter off there. Okay, that is a 27. no good and that's harder to rock so this is no good I gotta try to get this wow I can't use this I guess if they changed the filter the o-ring never went back correctly wow all right so I gotta see what I can find I might even have something <clears throat> okay so that is no good so what that means is I'm gonna have to stop there for now and I gotta see if I'm gonna go into my uh, parts box and see if I actually have an O-ring for the filter. If not, I'm gonna have to try to get one. <clears throat> uh, all right, so I'm gonna just probably move this over. I'm gonna clean up the pan, the bolts and everything, and I'm gonna move the transmission over to the other bench if I can't find anything. All right, so either way, we're gonna continue but just not sure when. Okay, so with that, I will be back. Okay, so I did find an O-ring for the filter. All right, this old one is flat like a pancake, very hard and brittle. 
and this one fits perfect onto the filter. So that's good. All right, so what I'm gonna do now, actually, I'm looking at where this cable, this cable here, goes into the transmission. You know, and it's clean around there, so it's very possible maybe this thing is leaking, maybe that cable O-ring is leaking. Um, and I'm wondering also, because he said it was leaking in between like the case and the, and the stator, and I wonder if the could be leaking down and around over here, uh, right by where the two meet, where there the gasket is. And maybe he thinks that's where it's coming from, but I certainly don't want to get a call from him and say, hey, it's still leaking in the same spot. Then I'm going to know it's the cable for sure. So it's easy enough just to pull this valve body off. Haven't done this in a while. Again, as I uh, said before, but we got um, um, 27, torque 27 bolts, and the larger head bolts are the ones that are going to come off, and the other ones hold uh, the halves together. So. Let's take these bolts out. All right, looks like we got one here, one here. Looks like there actually are two. Magnet here to get these out. Okay. There's basically two sizes uh, to these bolts. Okay, so let's get these out here. And it should lift right off. You know, the cable is attached to the valve body. We'll have to disconnect the cable. But it should lift right off. See if this is the last one. Yes. Okay. All right. So we got the manual valve here. We're going to lift that off. All right. Okay. So the cable actually works this this valve right here. But you know, pretty simple. It comes right off. And of course, if you were going to do the forward clutch deal, you gotta you gotta take that valve body apart. All right, so this is not going to be uh, that easy to do. What I'll probably have to try to do maybe is heat it up, and then um, And then bend the tabs in. I'm disconnecting the cable now from, from the cam. Okay. All right, let's give it a shot and see what happens. See if I can maybe heat heat those heat those up a little bit. All right, just give me a few minutes here. All right, so I'm gonna try to heat this up a little bit here. There's one of those you just touch it; it's so brittle. So one of them is broken, and let's see if we can get the others out.
Alright, there it is. I got it. And that one, which is fine, is broken. When I was playing with it, I just touched it and it just broke off. But these are still in good shape. And that O-ring, I'm going to change. I should be able to find something. Alright, good. Now I feel a little better. So I'm going to let this thing sit. And uh, we'll continue on this thing. I guess it's more. And I'm gonna see if I can find a new O-ring in my ZF um, 4HB22 kit box. All right, so this is good. Everything is intact, good. Okay, all right, so we got this out and I will catch up with you guys um, probably tomorrow morning. All right, so back with you. And I got this O-ring out. And of course this O-ring is flat it actually split when I was trying to get it off, so let's see. I didn't want to touch it yet, but it uh, definitely is, uh, yeah, it split again. Okay, so that was uh, definitely a good call on getting that cable out because it very well could have been, again, like I said, leaking through the cable O-ring and running down here because I said, is it coming out of the front seal when I was talking to him? And he said, that's nah, more like it's in between the case and, uh, and the pump, you know, the stator. So, <clears throat> that was a good call there. But I would have done that anyway. Because these other ones, uh, oh, the pump already really wasn't that bad. But really should be, uh, really should be done. Okay, <clears throat> so let's put this back in. resistance there because of the new o-ring okay <clears throat> all right now we're gonna hook the cable back up so I got this transmission as you see and I got a block of wood underneath it because the vent if I didn't have a block of wood holding it up just off the bench uh, the plastic vent would be touching the bench and if this thing you know rolls and stuff like that was likely it's gonna it's gonna break the vent. Okay, so this we'll hook back up. All right, give it a test. That looks good. <clears throat> All right, so now we're really ready to put this valve body back on. Let's get this O ring out of here. Okay. So we gotta make sure this gets hooked up. So we may have to just kind of hold, hold the the cam back a little bit like that here, so it uh, it'll get hooked up. And we got also gotta hook up the manual valve. <coughs> All right. So <clears throat> here is the manual valve. Here is the uh, roller that that's gotta get hooked up to. Let's set it in place. All right, so you know what? So I have it back a little bit. So I'm gonna hook up the manual valve and push the whole valve body forward. And actually, that looks pretty good. Everything's okay, so now up. we got the valve body on and we're gonna put the bolts in. And I had thought originally there were two, just two different length bolts along in the short one, but there actually are three. So the long bolts, there's two of them. You know, there's two slightly larger and, you know, just a slight difference, I should say. All right, and then here's the shorter one. So there actually are three different length bolts. So let's get all the short ones in here. Okay, so the filter bolts, three filter bolts are gonna go here. So let's see now. 
we should have at least uh, maybe two bolts that are slightly longer. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so the little shorter one is going to go here. All right, the two slightly longer bolts will go here. And here. One here, one here. So now let me just put these in just to make sure everything will be lined up, but we're not going to, of course, tighten these. Seven is around here somewhere. Yes. Then we're going to torque these down. I'm going to do about 100 inch pounds. Okay, and then these three again filter. Okay, let's set this. Do the filter. Just move this up a little bit. Okay. So the only thing we have left is the pan. And let's take a look at... So we've got two different brackets that hold the pan in place. All right, so you have four of these and two of these. And the four go on each corner and these two go in the middle.
already. That's very nice. All right, so here's this is gonna go in the middle. again in the corners. This I'm gonna do first, do about 85. And that's, that might even be too much. Better be careful with these bolts that strip. All right, so I got this at 80. Cable's working good. All right, now we're gonna just uh, this. Again, you gotta be careful with that vent. I'm gonna just hold the back up. It's over. Here is the here is the vent here I was talking about. So you just got to be careful. The whole thing is plastic. So there was some oil leaking out of here, but that's okay. All right. So this is complete. Um, again, I don't know the exact year. Um, I spoke to this guy uh, or the the owner of the shop. Mark is good. I spoke to the. Um, you know, the owner, the, the guy that owns the place, and he just, uh, this was a few weeks ago, and I didn't even, he didn't even think anything was going to be done because the engine needed work, and well, he saw the transmission was leaking. So it's got to be, um, you know, again, uh, late 80s maybe, uh, possibly early 90s BMW, and if you can see, let me just... Uh, Make sure you guys can get a shot of that. Okay. Because it's a glare when I look and I can't really see. Uh, all right. So it looked like here, around where the cable goes in, um, you see this area is all dirty, but this area was all clean. So a lot of times, you know, the oil will clean all that up, and that's a, a, a way you can possibly tell if it's leaking. So that's why I was going to do it anyway. Uh, but I know it was very brittle. And probably as soon as you touch the thing, it was going to break, which it did. But heating it up really worked. So this is all dirty here. But if the oil is leaking down and around, it may appear to be leaking from here. So we did a seal job. Uh, it is done. And I don't know how far he got with the engine work. I'll have to call him and let him know it's ready to go. And whenever he wants to come pick it up. All right, so we'll put this in here. And again, a ZF 
4 HP 22 4 speed rear wheel drive. Um, totally uh, hydraulic unit. If there was any on the later years that they did make with solenoids, the electrical connector would be through here. But this is 100% mechanical transmission. All right, and now you know, and any ZF4 HP22 that we spoke about with the forward clutch has that problem. So that is a uh, update for all 4 HP22s to drill the hole, to do the orifice. I'm sure that kit is still available because it really wasn't much of a problem with me getting the parts that I needed. So, you know, a couple of uh, uh, my supplier Transstar had everything. Uh, some stuff was not local, but hey, I was still able to get it in a timely manner. So that's great. All right, guys, I guess that's about it for this uh, early ZF unit. I thank you guys for watching. Have a great day, and we'll see you next one.